I have a problem, and that problem is Balatro. Since being introduced to the game, I've lost a lot of time to it. And, like all games I play, I am terrible at it. But some people are very good at it. So I was wondering, what does it actually take to get a high score in the game? You know, without actually getting any good at it. So before we get started, I've done a quick Google for Balatro mods, and I can see there is a GitHub page, but I've stopped looking here. I really want to figure this out for myself, so I won't be looking at any prior art. A quick bit of research shows that this was made with the Love, L Louvre? L Louvre? L Love engine, an open source game engine that uses the Lua scripting language. Lua is interesting as it's a lightweight language designed to be embedded in other applications, and I have some experience of this embedding it into my own game engine. <sighs> if only Balatro didn't take up all my time. Anyway, reading through the Love docs, it seems that they have a simple distribution method for Windows. For this, you have to append your .love file to the .love.exe file that comes with the official .love.zip file. The resulting file is your game executable. Once you have your game executable, you can pack it together with all the other DLL files of the official love.zip file into a new .zip file and share this with the world. So basically, you zip up all your assets and slap it on the end of the love.exe file. When that is executed, it will go to the end of the file, find that zip, and extract it to access all of the assets. So looking at balatro.exe, I can see it is a Windows executable file, but right at the bottom, it's got some magic numbers for zip files. In fact, 7-zip is smart enough to handle this hybrid file format for us. If we just go to extract it, then boom, we've got all the game assets. I think it's worth having a look through the code as it is quite interesting. The logic for handling all the jokers is just one massive if-else statement. If I were to write this, I'd probably start off with a base joker class, then have a derived one for each individual joker type, which means that the logic is kind of all nicely contained within individual classes. But I've not made a game that sold 1 million copies in a month. So what do I know? The code is quite easy to read, and at least it's not in Finnish. So we could just modify this Lua code to do whatever we want, and repackage it up and then run the executable. But let's make things a little bit more challenging for ourselves. Let's see if we can inject Lua code into the game whilst it's running, so we don't even have to modify any of these original files. Let's start by writing an injector program. This will use the Win32 API to create a new thread in the game as it is running. We'll get this new thread to call load library, which in turn will pick up and load a DLL that we have created here. So in essence, we can create a new thread in the game running our custom code, and I'll leave a link to a video where I go into this in a little bit more depth. So what do we want our custom code to do? Well, we want to interact with Lua, so we need to take a little look at how that works under the hood first. Lua has a relatively simple C API, and the first argument to all the functions is the Lua state, which you create once at the start of the program. This contains all the internal gubbins needed to run Lua, and you can think of this as the this or self object in other languages. Now, Lua is single-threaded, so each thread that you want to run Lua code in must have its own dedicated Lua state object, and all of these are totally independent from one another. But if we're running in a new thread, how do we access the Lua state object from another thread? I think the easiest way is for us to patch out one of the Lua C functions such that it saves off the first argument for us to retrieve. So let's give that a go. First thing we need to do is to pick a Lua C function that we suspect will get called whilst the game is running. So I've gone with Lua call, which is how you call into Lua from C. Next, we need to allocate a block of read write executable memory, the best kind of memory with no restrictions and then we remap the code where Lua call lives to make it writable. And now we patch out the first 14 instructions with a jump to our allocated block. Okay, that works, but there's nothing in this new code block, so it just crashes. Before we patch out the initial instructions, we'll copy them over to our little block and then add to the end of that a jump back to pass the patch. So now when we call Lua call, we jump to our new block execute the original instructions we patched out, and then jump back. This allows us to detour execution to our block, and then resume as if nothing had happened. At the moment, our detour doesn't do anything interesting, but if we also copy in these instructions before we jump back, then we'll save off a copy of the ECX register, which is the first argument, aka a pointer to the Lua state. And now we just spin in a loop waiting for that to be set. 
And now we can program the rest of our DLL like any other code embedding Lua using a Lua state as if we'd created it ourselves. And look at that, we can run custom Lua code. It's a bit flaky, Lua really doesn't like it when you run code in it on multiple threads. Of course, we have no locking mechanisms because the other threads just don't know we exist, but we can just suspend all the other threads when we want to run our Lua code. Now we can write some Lua code to dump all the global so we can start to see what game state can be modified. So it works, but for some reason, all I can see is stuff relating to sound. And looking back at the code, we can see that the game creates a separate thread for the sound. My guess is that we're injecting into the game after that initial Lua state is created and is fully in the Lua code. So it's no longer calling Lua call from any C or C++ code. If we use a debugger, we can suspend the program as soon as it starts and therefore try and get our injected payload to run right at the beginning. So we're ready to grab any Lua state as they're created and it deadlocks. So if you look at the docs for DLL main, which is the entry point for our custom code, there's a long list of things you shouldn't do and we are definitely doing some of them. A quick fix for this is just to run all our logic in a new thread and detach it from DLL main. Go, be free young thread. I've tried hooking a bunch of other Lua functions, but I can't seem to get anything but the audio thread. And I think I know why. The exit process, exit thread, create thread, create remote thread functions, and a process that is starting are serialized between each other within a process. Only one of these events occurs in an address space at a time. So even though I've smashed my thread into the process as soon as it starts, it's still serialized to happen after the program is initialized, which is presumably where this elusive Lua state is being created. We need an alternative approach, and I'm going to try and find some C functions, the main thread calls, which we can hook. Now, the game logic is all in Lua, so there's no point looking in the Balatro code. But if we look in the source code for love, we can see its main loop calls Lua x resume, which in turn calls Lua resume. So if we hook that to recover the state, then we get some new data and none of the audio gubbins. And in fact, we get underscore demo and underscore release mode. I'm a little confused. These are clearly part of the main thread, but there's loads of other stuff missing that I would expect, like this G variable, which I'm pretty sure contains all the game state. Having stared at this for a bit, there is no good reason why I'm missing all this chuff. What if, because I'm still injecting right at the start of the process, then by the time my Lua code gets to run and dumps the state, the game's Lua code hasn't quite caught up yet and finished initialising its actual game code. Let's just try and wait 10 seconds. You can fix any concurrency problem by just waiting a bit longer. If I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. We can now dump the game state so we can start to have a bit of fun with it. I've modified our injected code to monitor the file system for a Lua file with this name. When it finds one, it reads it, deletes it, and then executes it. And if our Lua code writes its output to another file, we kind of have a really dumb I.O. system using two files. Okay, enough messing around. How do we add jokers so we can get an insane score? Game has a card called Judgment, which will give you a random joker. So let's go look at the code for that to see how it works. Okay, we can take this and modify it to work in our injected Lua code. Nice, now we can keep adding jokers. Normally you can only hold a fixed number of jokers, but let's just try adding 100. Wow, <sighs> nice. Okay, I think we can just keep adding more cards. Let's try adding 1000 jokers. And go.
nice. Even though we made things more complicated for ourselves by going down the code injection route, we did manage to construct a system where we could execute arbitrary Lua code within the game. However, if you want to see more low-level game hacking, then check out this next video.